Not only does this travel trailer have a really neat bunkhouse style floor plan, but it also has a bunch of fifth wheel like features that are just not common to find in a travel trailer RV. Let's go take a look. What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. For y'all that are new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound and we are here at Blue Compass RV in Denton, Texas today. Sorry, not Denton, Texas, Canton, Texas today. Taking a look at this Flagstaff Superlight 26 BHW. And right away, I mean, the first thing I noticed that is so surprising to see on a travel trailer is frameless windows. And there is so much more to talk about on this travel trailer. But real quick, again, you can see we're here at Blue Compass in Canton, Texas. That's gonna be east of Dallas. And if you are interested in this RV or if you're just ready to start shopping for your next RV, you can click the link down below in the description or comments of this video. And you can see all of the most up-to-date pricing information and location information as Blue Compass has over 100 different locations across the United States, across 33 different states. So lots of available options out there for you with over thousands and thousands of RVs in inventory. So go click that link if you are ready to start shopping for your next RV. Now this Flagstaff Superlight, again, like I mentioned, frameless windows, you have 30 pound propane bottles up front, power tongue jack, a spot for a bigger battery here if you wanted to do a massive 270 amp hour lithium battery that will also fit there. You get this Moride sliding tray in your storage compartment Definitely something I can't recall, you know, any other travel trailer having this size of a sliding tray in the storage compartment. That is amazing. You also have this griddle cooktop here. Little nice touches like your 50 amp power cord is just in this bag here instead of just being thrown in the storage compartment. They put it in a bag for you. You also have this table that can be set up outside as well. So griddle and table both can connect back here to this spot right there, they can go into that rail system. You also have an outdoor shower on your campsite. So this is nice, giving you an outdoor hot and cold water source on the campsite of your travel trailer RV. Awning outside as well, you can see it covers almost the entire length of this travel trailer. You can also tell that this has a really nice ceiling height in it as it is bigger than a lot of other travel trailers as well with a very, you know, kind of boxy design. Very nice looking front cap. Again, kind of like a frameless looking front windshield here. Really nice, good quality on that automotive grade. And then last thing before we step inside as well, you have three slide outs on this travel trailer. And let's look at the exact specs real quick while we're here. Um, length on this 29 feet, nine inches, and it is 7,099 pounds without anything in it. It's going to be fully loaded coming in at, let's see, 8,738 pounds with a 1,580 pound cargo carrying capacity. Now, one thing to mention towing with a half ton, and I just mentioned this real quick because I think towing safety is so important. You want to be mindful of the hitch weight on this as the hitch weight on here is almost 950 pounds. So you, that will be directly correlated to your cargo carrying capacity. Like my truck, my Tundra only has about a 1200 pound payload or cargo carrying capacity, which means hooking up this trailer without anything in it already only leaves me about 300 pounds left before I am maxing out the payload capacity on my Tundra. Now keep in mind, every truck is different. So your truck may have a higher payload capacity that's very likely, but that's just something to be mindful of where that payload capacity also accounts for people in the vehicle, anything that you put in the bed of the truck. Like I keep a big, probably 300 pound plus generator in the back of my truck as well. So a trailer like this would overload my truck. So something to be mindful of. Also, you have a torsion axle down underneath here as well. But let's step inside and take a look at this floor plan. I'm excited to get inside here and show y'all. And you let me know what you think. As we step inside, also want to give you a second just to take a look at this here so you can pause the video and take a look at some of the build qualities on here. Um, some of the most important things, you have 12 volt heat pads on your water tanks, 200 watt solar panel with an 1800 watt inverter and a 30 amp solar charge controller. And there is additional solar prep. So if you wanted to add more solar, you have that as well. You have a 5 8 inch thick plywood floor and you have a complete Asdell construction on the sidewall or a composite panel sidewall there. So no uh, Luon in the sidewall. Now, as we walk inside, take a look at this layout, y'all. Again, keep in mind, this is a lightweight bunkhouse travel trailer. This is not designed to be like the biggest bunkhouse travel trailer out there. So if you're wanting something like you know, I could already hear the comments like, oh, you know, the living room's not big enough or whatever, right? But this is a lightweight, compact 
bunkhouse style travel trailer and you still get two comfortable recliners here those are very nice and also you can get a um sofa here as well if you want that instead of the recliners a sofa that would make into a bed plus you get two additional seats right here so you have seating for four in this living room area and again this is meant to be a compact living room you have a flip up additional countertop space here and these are all solid surface countertops at that and look at how big that countertop space is giving you plenty of space here to either you know have a nice meal work do whatever you need to do you have your tv up here now it is not the biggest tv ever you can see from the recliner what that tv will look like it's probably about a 32 inch screen tv there but again we're out camping this camper is definitely designed to be more one that you're out camping in and maybe not doing like not living in full time although people live in smaller than this so it is possible you have really nice looking cabinets here real wood on your cabinet doors and drawers so it looks nice nice black handles on those and then storage here next to the oven you get this magic chef oven here this is bigger than your standard travel trailer oven but not like the biggest oven in existence still really good size on that though three burner gas stove stainless steel sink here and then you have your black faucet, little balloon trick to stop any dripping from happening there. Then turn around, you have your refrigerator here. This will get us to the price real quick. Let's just knock this out of the way. So your price on this travel trailer that they have here at the Canton store with Blue Compass is $48,995. And you can see some of the specs there as well. And keep in mind, there's a link down below in the description in the comments of this video where you can get the most up-to-date pricing information and all of the different locations this RV is available at as Blue Compass has over 100 different stores across the United States. Now, one of the coolest things about, where's the, oh yeah, right here, about this, ooh, and there's, okay, learned a lesson right there. You have to be careful with these refrigerators and freezers. They open both ways. But because they open both ways, that also means you could take this door completely off. So when you close this, you have to make sure it's latched all the way before you go to open it on the other side, which it was not there. So you can see how you can open them both directions, but it has to be latched completely for that hinge to work going the other way. Love this idea though. I think this is great. Just, you know, taking away any confusion on which side your refrigerator opens from. Plus it just makes sense in a smaller travel trailer. Also, ceiling height in here, there's a little bit of a radius ceiling here, and this ceiling height feels like it's gotta be at least seven feet in here. We'll measure this when we get to the bathroom space. Um, last little bit of storage here in the kitchen, you got a spot here for some sponges and whatnot, and then pull-out drawers here. So you have three pull-out drawers. In the slide out, no carpet. It's this woven PVC style material here, nice rug. It's kind of like an outdoor rug, and it's nice and flexible. Again, the recliners here, very comfortable. They are going to recline. You have cup holders on both sides and a removable armrest. So if you're a snuggler and want to snuggle up with your spouse or whatever it may be, you have the ability to do that. And these also recline. They have a pull strap recline right here. And you can recline that back. Also like the, oh, look at how far that lays back. That is, that thing is looking comfy for sure. And I love the fact that they have the removable armrest in the middle. So if you have a little one too, you could put your little one between you two and you know have that space there as well. Now I added option on here is they have the day and the night shades. This is something outside of this brand you typically only see on high end, usually like $100,000 plus fifth wheel RVs. So love to see that you get both options with those. You have your storage space here. This will be most people's pantry space, I would imagine, is what you will use that for. So you got your pantry and then nothing under there, but it just looks decorative. Outlets here, let's check the outlets in the kitchen space real quick because we kind of glanced over that. You have an outlet there in the corner and a pop-up outlet right here. So outlets, USB and USB type C connection in that pop-up outlet. Plus it's a wireless charging pad on top as well can see some of the different features on here. This does have the second AC on it. It even has a heated mattress. So that is pretty cool. Definitely don't see that in many travel trailers, but love having the heated mattress option. And um, aluminum frames under the dinette and bed bases. We'll talk about that when we get to the bed. You can see some of that stuff there. 
Now, as we come back into the bedroom, they kind of open up this space more than you traditionally get with a bunkhouse by not doing a wall here in this area. Instead, you get a privacy curtain. So you can see right there, it's just Velcroed to the wall and you have a privacy curtain that will pull across like so. So that gives you your privacy, but it opens up the space really nicely. And then you have your sofa right here. This does also have an option to do a dinette table in this area that could also collapse down into a bed. And then you have your bunk up here. Now look at how thick this mattress is. Definitely thicker than a lot of other bunkhouse mattresses. You have your ladder there to get up onto the bunk and they even give you a nice grab handle here. Just added luxuries or just little, you know, kind of creature comforts to make that more easy for you. Strut assisted on the bunk, lifted up super easy. You have nice pillows back through here. You have a spot for a TV on the wall so you can mount a TV if you would like. You could hang out in this space. You have lots of shelves here for storage and you have big storage through here with shelving. No hanging rod up in there or is there? No, no hanging rod. And see how that goes down like so plus a little more storage underneath here. Outlets here, USB and USB type C connection. Um, this window here only has a pull down nightshade. So just a nightshade on that one. You do have a little spot to vent out air here. It doesn't have a fan, but it is a vent that will open up. Of course you have AC ducting back into here and no heat vents in the flooring. So you can see their heat is ran right through there and comes out of the wall. So no heat vents in the floor. Now this sofa here, let's figure out exactly how this operates. Let me get y'all set up real quick so I can deconstruct this sofa and we can take a look at it. Don't make fun of the fanny pack. The fanny pack is how I carry my tape measure for y'all so we can measure some different specs inside of this RV and some of my camera equipment as well. Let's see here. So this is going to pull out like so. Make sure this is all the way out. There we go. Lift up right here. Boom. And there you have it. That's going to be your bed space. Now let's use the fanny pack to get our handy dandy tape measure. I don't really want to lay on the bed. I'd rather just measure it for you and show you what this bed space looks like. You got a length here of about 52 to 53 inches and a width of about 53 and a half to 54 inches. So that's what you're working with, with the bed space here. Might as well just lay down and see if it's something I could actually sleep on. I would have to lay diagonal, but this will work for me. I could do this right here all day. That would definitely work. So that is your um, dimensions on this bed. Let's get this back down. You kind of saw how this works here now slide this back underneath. It's just on some wheels there. So it slides pretty easily. Like the pillows that they gave you, they kind of work, you know, either way, they're all three, the same pillows, but you can flip them either direction for whatever styling you want. And then bed right here, dimensions on this one, you're right at about 72, 73 inches on this. 70, yeah, 73 inches, so six foot one. And the width on this, not super wide, it's about 28 inches. So those are all of your dimensions for these sleeping areas. If you appreciate that extra effort that I'm putting in to bring this tape measure with you, or with me and with us here as we review these RVs, make sure to let me know down below in the comments so I can remember to keep doing that going forward. That's just about everything in this bunk space. Let's head back into the bathroom back through this bathroom, really interesting design. Right away, see a porcelain foot flush toilet, nice cornered off so there's shoulder space on both sides. Uh, this is gonna be like a wrapped countertop here, so not a solid surface countertop in the bathroom. Plastic sink, it is a nice deep bowl sink though. You can see hands definitely fit easily in there. You have your medicine cabinet storage. Storage down underneath here and a little bit of storage down underneath there, but water pump back underneath that space. You do get a um, window in here. I don't know why I almost said a mirror. You get a window in here as well. So you can, you know, have some natural light into the space. You have a bigger vent fan in the bathroom. We love that. And then your shower, look at, first of all, look at the base on this shower, a good amount of space in there. 
and you have a shower miser system on here. So if you don't know about this, that little blue pipe right there, that is going to turn a white color when it gets hot. So what this does, because water is so precious inside of an RV, this is going to recirculate your water until it gets hot so that you don't waste any water either from your water supply or the precious space in your gray tank that this water is going to fill when it goes down the drain. So this makes sure you don't waste a drop of water. You just let this water recirculate till it gets hot and then you turn this on so the water will go to the shower head and you didn't waste a single drop of water. So we love that. Now let's get in here and measure some of these dimensions in here and hopefully I can also sort of show you what I look like in the space as well being six one with my shoes off. We're gonna pop those off. First of all, I'll show you what I look like and then we'll measure. So, oh yeah, plenty of height. It's probably about six foot one to right here. In the skylight, you could be about six four, six five. Shower head actually does sit at a good height where I don't have to duck underneath it. You probably can't see that there, but I actually don't have to duck underneath this shower or the shower head. And then for the dimensions on here, got too many pockets in this fanny pack. <laughs> you got uh, dimensions on the width. You're right at 23 inches. And on the height, we're looking at, let's get this up. This is always the most difficult part to measure. On the height, we are at, yep, 73 and a, yeah, right at about 73 inches to the lowest point. And up in the skylight, you got, where's that? It's gonna be, oh gosh, about 78 inches for that height there. So 78 inches to the highest point, and not even the highest point actually, I measured that to, it's kind of slanting down. You actually can probably get almost 79 inches at the very tallest point in that shower up towards the front. So love that, that's a great shower for this size travel trailer all the way around, something I definitely would be comfortable in and would have no problem showering in. So to come back this way, you have your controls right when you walk in. This is a motion activated panel so you can see how it lights up when you walk by it. You also have again the 12 volt heat pads to turn on right there, on in controls, slide out controls, all that stuff. You have your 30 amp solar charge controller panel right here. And then let's get back into the bedroom. Back into the bedroom, really love this space as well. Really nice looking queen size bed. This is actually a soft memory foam style mattress. This is no cheap mattress or I actually, I don't know how much it costs, but I laid on it and it doesn't feel cheap. Let's put it that way. This is a mattress I would not actually feel like I need to replace. You see the difference in quality with Flagstaff when you lift the bed up. Instead of having wood framing underneath here, they have aluminum framing. And these aluminum pieces even have wood backing inside of the aluminum frame so that everything that screws in can secure in nicely and definitely better quality than you see from just about anything else that's gonna use a wood frame underneath here. Have three drawers that pull out underneath, so some added storage with that. You get a bedroom slide out. Now this is one of my favorite things about the Flagstaff Classic is you get a north to south facing queen bed, which gives you room to walk around the bed on both sides, but they also give you a bedroom slide out so you get all of this additional wardrobe storage because traditionally with north to south facing bedrooms, especially in a travel trailer under 30 feet, you're usually losing a lot of wardrobe storage, but not with this one. So you get this little slide out here. You're going to have outlets and USB ports on this side. You have some storage down underneath here as well. This is the only space that we find carpet right here. And this basically underneath there is just your outdoor storage compartment. You have storage up above here. And remember again, this does have a heated mattress as well. AC here in the bedroom, it is on full blast right now and it is very quiet, so we love that. Over here on this side, pretty much the same thing except this is a pull out drawer for your storage. You have the windshield up front, pull down blackout shade on that windshield so you can get your privacy when you need it. And again, ceiling height in here is just great. Spot for a TV on the wall here. You couldn't do that big of a TV, but it's not bad at all. And then you have a spot for a antenna right there, or not an antenna, sorry, a, a Wi-Fi router if you want to install the WineGuard Wi-Fi router. Both of your steps are strut assisted. So you can see that little black part right there. That's gonna be the strut assist feature. So your steps from outside have that assist on them. Gonna make them virtually weightless for you and make sure they don't fall on you or anything like that. And that is just about everything on the inside. So I'm gonna slip my shoes on, give you a second real quick to comment below what you like, what you don't like. And if you could see yourself 
camping in something like this. And then we'll go outside and we'll finish up going through the last couple pieces of information y'all probably want to know on this travel trailer or want to see. So let's go outside and wrap this thing up. But let me know down below in the comments what you like and don't like so far. Show you how that strut assist feature works real quick. You can see right there, these steps will stay at whatever height they are left at. So you don't have to worry about them falling on you because they are a little bit heavy if you don't have that strut assist feature. It does have a gas and electric water heater. I could not find the exact size of the tank on this, but I'm guessing it's probably a six gallon gas electric water heater that you have. So best way to make that the most efficient, turn on both heat sources at the same time, both your gas and electric, and you'll be able to get that heat going as fast as possible to heat that water as it's going through that tank. Outlet spot here, and then right here, it looks like this is gonna be a spot to plug in. Yeah, if you wanted to do a satellite connection, most people aren't doing that these days, but you still have it. A little safety light right there next to the step. Again, you have a torsion axle down underneath there, and it's gonna have basically kind of like an independent suspension system, essentially. It doesn't have like a coiled independent suspension system for off-road, but you can see down there, plus again, fully uh, enclosed underbelly, all your water tanks and water lines sit above the enclosed underbelly, and they utilize a drop frame here to give you a bigger storage compartment up front. You have electric stabilizers, four stabilizers in total, two up front and two off the back. Again, nice big awning. You have a support bar in the middle as well so it doesn't sag on you over time. LED light underneath the awning and outdoor speakers. Come around this side and your smaller slide is gonna have a Swintech slide mechanism. Bigger slides will have a rack and pinion style slide mechanism. Storage space here. Goes through there, you have your inverter right there, 1800 watt inverter, all aluminum framing, welds on both sides of the frame. You have this storage space right here, which is pretty cool, cause it doesn't look like much, but if you wanna put some tall stuff in here, like some fishing poles and whatnot, it goes all the way up there. So big space there to store things like fishing poles, I think is probably the most common application people will use that for. Water connections right here between your slide outs. And then coming along this side, you have a spot where you can store things in your sewer hose, or your sewer hose can store in the bumper, sorry. And you have your one tank area that will dump right here. Actually, that's not true, I misspoke. That's gonna be black and gray tank for the bathroom. And then it looks like you have one gray tank dump valve area up front here in front of the axles for your kitchen sink. It also has a um, Goodyear Endurance tire on here. And finally, you have a ladder to get up onto the roof, spot for a spare tire. Does have an accessory hitch right here, rated for 300 pounds. Let's hop up on the roof real quick, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Prep for a backup camera. Wow, you even have vent covers already installed on your vent up here. Love that. So that's gonna protect your vent. Um, you can see like this one here next to us, that's your vent right there, and it does not have a vent cover on it. So already have that additional protection. So your 200 watt solar panel there and your two ACs plus your wine guard antenna. So everything looks good up here. Keep in mind one of the most common pieces of maintenance you'll do on an RV is coming up and checking these seals at least once a year, more likely like once every six months, just to make sure there's no cracking or anything like that on the seals. Cause that is how you get roof damage is if those seals crack up there and moisture gets in. So you wanna make sure you're getting up there to check that regularly. And I almost forgot, but I came back for y'all to close the slide so you could see you do have a path here to get to your refrigerator, but it will not be the easiest path ever. You want to make sure not to put too much weight on this lip here of the slide out, but you can wiggle your way through there or even climb over this countertop, send your kids to climb over the countertop, you know, to get to the refrigerator and freezer in that area. Also your bathroom, very easy to get to. You're not going to have any slide restriction getting to your bathroom space going down the road. And that's pretty much it. So let me know what y'all think on this travel trailer RV. And again, if you are interested in it or if you're just ready to start shopping for your next RV, click the link down below in the description or comments of this video. There's over a hundred different Blue Compass locations across the United States that span across 33 different states. So lots of different options out there for you. And we're here to help. And until next time, live firmly unbound.